الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Inshallah, today we will be looking at the concise tafsir of Surah Al-Kawthar. Surah Al-Kawthar is one of the shortest surahs in the Quran. It is only three verses and many, many people, even little children, know this particular surah. Now, Al-Kawthar, what is Al-Kawthar? Arabs generally refer to lots of goodness, an excess of goodness, abundant goodness as Al-Kawthar. So this is what Al-Kawthar generally refers to. It is also known as a river in Jannah, which will be given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specifically. And the background to this particular surah is that the Arabs used to taunt those who had no male offspring. So whoever's male offspring had, offspring had passed away, so either they had no children or they only had daughters, meaning that the lineage of this person would not continue through male offspring. They would refer to this person as Abtar. They would taunt this person. Abtar being a person having no male offspring. So this particular surah was revealed as a consolation to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who himself had lost all of his sons during his lifetime. And it also shows the status and the praise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ulama mentioned it was like a gift to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which although very short, but is abundant in meaning and goodness. Some ulama also mentioned that Al-Kawthar refers to Nubuwa, it refers to the Quran, it refers to the number of companions that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has and the Ummatis. However, the meaning with regards to abundant goodness in both worlds and specifically the river in Jannah is generally the most authentic meaning. As we mentioned, the background to the revelation of this surah, which is a Makki surah, revealed in Makkah with three verses, was that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa three sons had passed away, two of them in Makkah in infancy, Abdullah and Qasim, and the third had passed away in Medina. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa even in Makkah did not have any male offspring and therefore people would taunt him. The uh, mushrikeen of Makkah would taunt him in particular, As bin Wail, and there are mentioned uh, other names that are mentioned as well, but particularly As bin Wail, who would taunt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they said that he had no male offspring and therefore his lineage, his message, etc. would not continue. Generally in the Arab community, one's lineage, one's tradition, one's business would pass on from father to son and father to son. And they were so as to say that the deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa will terminate with him because he had no biological sons after him. Now we move on to the translation. Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Indeed, we have given you, referring to, referring to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa al kawthar. Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Indeed, we have given you Al-Kawthar. Now, as we have mentioned, Al-Kawthar generally refers to abundant goodness. And there is a hadith which comes in Bukhari, wherein Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu says with regards to Al-Kawthar, that it is the abundant goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And somebody asked that, what about the fact that there is, there is a claim that it is a river in paradise? So the reply was that the river in paradise is part of the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. Therefore, it is the abundant goodness in this world and the akhirah, part of which is this particular river in paradise. There is another hadith wherein it is mentioned that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum say that while we were with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the masjid, he went into some kind of slumber or doziness. Then he lifted his head smiling. And we asked, O Nabi of Allah, what has caused you to smile? So he replied, a surah has just been revealed to me. He then recited Bismillah and he recited Surah Al-Kawthar. Then he asked, do you know what is Al-Kawthar? Sahaba radiallahu anhum mentioned that Allah and his messenger know best. So he said, it is a river that my Lord, the mighty and majestic, has promised me 
and it has abundant goodness. It is a fountain where my ummah will come on the day of judgment. Its containers are as numerous as the stars in the sky. So here we find that in addition to it being abundant goodness, it is also a river that is going to be in Jannah. And in addition to a river in Jannah, it will also be a fountain on the Maidan Hashar, on the plains of gathering. So ulama mentioned that the river itself, the source is in Jannah, and there will be two canals that will flow from Jannah into the fountain that will be on the plains of gathering. And the believers will arrive at the fountain before they will enter into Jannah. However, there will be some unfortunate people who will be deprived. These are people who uh, introduced an innovation or changed the deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam after he passed away. In fact, in some ahadith, it is mentioned that as people will come, then Rasulullah sallallahu will go towards them to give them something to drink from this hold of Qawthar. But an angel or somebody would be deputed to say that suhkan, suhkan, he will chase these people away. And it will be asked, why are you chasing these people away? Because they are my, part of my ummat. So it will be said that you do not know what changes these people made after you had passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Now, with regards to the river or the pond, it is mentioned that there will be extremely clean and sweet water. The banks will be adorned with pearls. They will be made of gold. The smell of the water will be more fragrant than musk. Its taste will be sweeter than honey. And in color, it will be whiter than snow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity to drink from this blessed pond of Kothar. Moving on, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرُ So offer prayer, offer salah to your Lord and sacrifice. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرُ So offer prayer to your Lord and sacrifice. Here, ulama mentioned that we are talking about Salah, generally the Fard Salah. And when we talk about Nahar, generally in Arabia, Nahar referred to the slaughter of camels, but Ulama mentioned that it refers to any sacrifice that one offers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abdar. Surely it is your enemy whose traces have been cut off. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abdar. That surely it is your enemy whose traces have been cut off. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning something very deep and profound. That if we look at the enemies of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa if we look at As bin Wail, if we look at Ka bin Ashraf, if we look at Uqba, uh, and all the different enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu today do we know who their children are? Have, have they, has their lineage been preserved? Whereas on the other hand, we look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who apparently passed away without any male offspring. But through the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are billions and billions of spiritual children that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is declaring that although they are calling you abtar, in reality, these are the people who a time will come where nobody will even know them. And in fact, we only know their names because of the disgrace that they have upon them as enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So in conclusion, this surah highlights to us how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he has blessed him with abundant goodness. We find that the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is recited along the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day. And not only five times a day, in so many different parts of the world, the Azan is called out continuously over a 24-hour basis. In fact, in non-Muslim lands, in Kuffar lands, we find that the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is joined with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and called out five times a day. Also, when each of us mention the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, all those who are sitting around have been commanded that they should also send durood upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Nabi sallallahu mentions that one category of uh, miserliness is that person who the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is mentioned and he does not send durood and salam by mentioning sallallahu alayhi wasallam upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is a great miser. Rasulullah sallallahu has also been given al-maqam al-mahmud, the station of praise on the day of Qiyamah. And we make dua for that when we read the dua after Adhan. 
So we should try and, and encourage and, uh, each other and we ourselves should read the dua after Adhan because in it we make the dua for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to get the station of praise. In addition, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is given the rank of having intercession or, being, or making intercession for the entire progeny of Adam alayhi salam. So there are so many virtues that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has and unfortunately we don't have the time to go into them. But this particular surah highlights the station of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and although it is a very short surah, it is deep in meaning and we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Qiyamah and he gives us to drink from the blessed pond of Al-Kawthar Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk